Hi guys, what are we gonna do today? I've been showing this picture for a while. We finally got it done. What is it? Sardines in a can. Haven't you always wanted to make your own sardines in a can? I just thought this was so novel and so fun. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna knead our box. I am using these little clam boxes. I carry these in my shop page, but you could use any type of small cardboard box that you would like. I'm gonna cut it in half because I'm only gonna need half of it. I thought this was just a really cute shape and size. And in between, I'm just gonna slim this down, the in-between part here a little bit. For this front piece, I am using a one-sided corrugated cardboard. One-sided means it's flat on one side, it's bumpy on the other. If it's double-sided, it's smooth on both sides. I wanted a one-sided, and you could probably get this from a box that you're getting in the mail. So I'm gonna take the smooth side, and what you wanna remember is you want these ridges to run this way horizontally across this box so that when we roll it, it rolls nicely. So what I'm gonna do is just trace around my box. And we're gonna cut this little guy out. Line it up, decide if you want to cut a little more. You know, I think this is gonna be just fine. So now, I am gonna paint my box in, in both sides of this. And I'm just using my DIY crinoline, but you can use any type of paint you would like. So you're gonna paint the inside and the outside? The inside you're only gonna see part of anyway, up to about half, but I decided I'd just paint it off. Makes it just as easy. And on this cardboard, it dries really, really quick. It just soaks it and dries pretty fast. A little water, because it was uh, really soaking in here. Cover it a little better. So I'm gonna paint both sides of this. Let the side dry for a sec. So you can paint your box any color you like. If you want it to look like a, a rusted can, use a gray or a silver or a rust color, just whatever colors you would like to use. Okay, so I'm gonna let these dry, and uh, we are going to move on to our fish while this is drying. So here's the template, you can download this. So at the bottom of the video, it'll say, it'll have a description, it'll say see more, and then it gives you a link that you can print this out. And I just found a bunch of fun little canned fish type things, but you could use whatever you would like and I shrunk them down so they'd fit on the box really, really well. So when our box is completely dry, we're gonna pick one to put on there. So on this template, I've drawn the fish out and then I have these little lines drawn on here and I'll show you what that means. And there's a little image of an eye and your key that turns your piece. Now you could even add a little stick or a, or a pop can opener or you could add a real key, you could add whatever you would like. I just thought this was really, really simple. And then here is where I put one of my cute little fish labels. So you can pick one from these or do your own. So we are going to cut out our fish. And I'm gonna do six fish, but you can do as few or as many as you would like. So on this template, I just traced this template onto this cardstock and drew it out on here. This is the way it goes. You can tell I've been using this template a lot. So what I did is I just put my lines here so I knew where they went. Now I'm gonna use some of this pretty paper to make my fish. They're all gonna be different by the time I'm done, so it won't really matter, but you can use whatever you would like. And since I'm using a piece of cardstock, it draws around really well. And I know this little line is where I'm gonna wanna put this. It's just a little opening there. Then I'm just gonna draw. 
and you can freehand that. You can do it any way you would like. You can use all different color papers. I'm just going to use this one because I'm going to stamp a few of them to make them look a little different anyway. So right now I'm using my Stabilo pencil. One thing you want to know about this pencil is if you get it really wet, it'll move around. So you want to do it very, very carefully. So you don't, if you're going to use a pencil like this, otherwise you can use any type of a pencil or a very fine line marker or whatever you would like to use. So I have some fun rubber stamps that I just found online. Uh, this one was fun because it was kind of like a fishing net. There's some funky numbers. Here's a little grid. Here's some more fishing net. I think I might use this one on a couple. So what I'm gonna do is I am actually going to lay this over that. So when I stamp, I am just stamping right in there. So what I'm gonna do is I am just masking it off with my cardboard there or you could just make a paper mask to make it a little thinner and i'm going to use some black ink but once again this can be just whatever you would like to do make sure it doesn't go over your template and i just went up to where the neck is We're gonna do fun fishing net. It's kind of fun. But even just the dots on it is cute. So if you didn't wanna do anything else, you don't need to. Now let's try something else fun. And even if it doesn't go all the way down, most of the tail is not gonna be showing anyway. And I think this last one I'll do with these fun numbers. There you go. Now we've got some fish. So since I use my Stabilo pencil, I need to be really careful getting moisture on here. So we're gonna do this together and I'm just gonna go real quickly over it so it doesn't, I don't wanna like that, smear it. So you're gonna get one pass. So a spray sealer probably would have worked better on this for the Stabilo pencil. But even where it's smearing out, won't matter because I'm cutting all that off. So let's let this dry and then we'll cut it out. So I'm gonna take my key and I'm gonna trace that also onto this blue paper. You could put it on anything you would like. And I just cut the key out of the template. And then here's the actual template. I thought it was easier to trace around it with that one, but I'll trace this little square. I'm going to cut this out. And this is just a paper that I kind of made. All it is is a heavy craft paper with some blue tissue paper decoupaged on top. But you can use any sort of paper you would like. Or you can use something heavy like a cardstock so it'll hold up well. This isn't super, super heavy, but it's, it works well enough. And I'll just need my X-Acto and I'll cut out the center here. So when you're using an X-Acto, be very careful. This thing is very, very, very sharp. So now I've got my key. So let's decide which image we want to use with our fish. Yeah, I'm just going to use this image this time. So I want to make sure I have this lined up the way it needs to go. That goes that way. That goes that way. That's going to go. Sometimes the box will seem a little different size on one side than the other. Don't ask me why. So I just want to make sure that my top piece is lined up correctly. And then I know what we are gonna be doing is we are going to be rolling this and it's gonna go part way down. 
I'm not sure how far down yet. We're gonna find out when we get our fish in. But I know I'm gonna um, decoupage this on. So I think I'm gonna do that right now, which is decoupage that right there. So when you're decoupaging this, you definitely wanna make sure it's at the bottom because that's where the can will not be rolled up because otherwise you won't see it. And you could use a really large image, but some of it may be covered by the tin roll. I'm just gonna seal it a bit. We're gonna let this dry. Next thing we're gonna do is get our fish and do their bottom layer and we're going to get them in here. So this is still drying a bit, but I think I'm just going to glue it on to the rest of this corrugated cardboard. Because in my box, these have a little bit of a 3D effect. Otherwise, they would just lay flat on top of each other and they wouldn't look like a pile of fish. So I am just going to decoupage this whole piece down to here because this is gonna be, this is drying still anyway, and then we'll give both pieces to dry. And you could use any type of glue that you would like for this. We're just gluing this to this corrugated cardboard. And it doesn't matter which way the direction the lines are going for this part. Okay, we'll set this aside, let this dry completely, and then we will cut it out. Okay, so these are dry, so I am going to cut them out. So I've cut all of these guys out, and now I'm gonna use some vintage photo antiquing, and when I get my sealer on the top, it'll move it around, they won't be quite as dark. And I'm also going to go over my, some of this. And this is just my antiquing also. So I'm going to seal this with my polyacrylic. And then we're going to glue it together. I'm using my polyacrylic crystal clear Minwax sealer. And since I already sealed it, once, my Stabilo pencil won't run again. But this helps the antiquing to move and it gives it a nice seal. So I'm also doing the same thing in sealing the box, and this is the part that's gonna be rolled up. I only need to get so far down here. And it's also moving some of the antiquing around. And then I'm also gonna do the actual box piece. And you can do the whole thing or just the half inside. Um, I'm gonna do the front and the back. You could do whatever you would like. You know what, I think I want a little bit of color in my box. And I'm not worried about it being perfect. I'll just squish it in and just decoupage it down. It's just tissue paper. And I could leave it white, but then I'd have white fish on white. And I really wanted just a little more color. I know the bottom's not gonna be seen. I'm not worried about any wrinkles at all, because most of that will be covered anyway. I'm gonna get my hot glue gun turned on and decide how I want to lay out my fish. So I'll do three at the bottom when I do it. Then I'll do two more. Then I'll do one more. And I'm gonna glue them in before I glue the lid on to make it a little easier, but then you can kind of see where we're, we're at. So let's get that hot glue gun turned on. So I'm gonna glue these fish in. My hot glue gun is done. So these three are going down here. That one came out the lightest. That'll go in the middle. It'll probably be seen the least. So and I want their mouths to go to the top of the box. So I am just putting some hot glue on the back of this. And sliding him right there.
Then I'm gonna put these two, one in between these two and one in between these two. And I'm gonna put my last guy right there. Like on this top one, I'm just gonna do a little glue on both sides, because you can see in the center when you're centering them, the glue in the center is just gonna go between the fish. It's not actually gonna stick. If you just go straight down the center. So I brought it down just a teeny bit. You can see his head. And then we can decide how far down we want this to go. I think that is gonna be good. That if I got my key in first, it worked better. Because if you try to get it in between later, it makes it a little bit tougher. So decide how far this is gonna go down. And I know it's gonna go to there. And I am just going to glue my key in first. however far you want it sticking out. I'm gonna do a couple rows here. Let's hold it for a second. And then I'm gonna see where I'm going to here and make sure I get my hot glue around this. If you were really good, you'd probably put blue on both sides so it wouldn't make any difference how far it turned, but I don't mind this like this. I think this looks really cute. Okay, didn't this seem pretty easy? Don't need a whole lot, and you can put whatever you want in your can. You could put flowers in your can. You could cut out little faces and people and put people in a can. Anything you can think of. You could put puppies in a can. How about cats in a can? Whatever you guys come up with, hope you have fun. <laughs>